Welcome back, my pretty little people. I hope you're having a great day. Today, I have this little fella, the boss of Sense Fortress, Big Stomper, the Iron Golem, fresh from the printer. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a platform which is based on the boss arena for him to stand on. So we'll be taking this and we'll be making this. To begin painting this chonky boy, we'll need to first get him primed black. Now, I could just dry brush on some metallics and try some TMM on this guy, but I kind of need to improve on my NMM game, so we're going to give that a try today instead. So, for this, I'll be using a couple different greys, some blacks, and some whites. I'm going to get out the old wet palette and load up my paints onto it. So, first up, we're going to get the whole thing based with some Mechanica Standard Grey. The idea here is just get a thin base coat all over the model so then we can start building up different tones, highlights and shadows onto it. One thing I've seen people do is mix in some more natural earthy tones into the greys to make the armour seem a bit more realistic and natural. So I'm going to be using this Storm Vermin Fur to be our next brighter tone and applying thin layers of this into the centre of the grey into areas where I think light would reflect the most. The next colour I'm going to be using is Celestra Grey, which is a nice light grey with a bit of greenish, bluish pigment to it and same as last time, just targeting this in the centre of the brown tone to start building up that nice light reflection. I still haven't mastered the art of NMM yet as it's kind of, you know, it's a pretty advanced skill to hone, but I think I'm slowly improving on it. I just, I just need to do it more. Then we can add in the Corax white to the very center of the highlights. I'm going to mainly focus on this shoulder here to sort of show you what I'm doing. And then I can just whiz through the rest of the body as it's all the same colors and technique throughout. You don't really need to see it all again and again and again. So just also adding some edge highlights with the white onto the ridges of the armor and going back into the shadows and beefing them up with some black glazing and that should really start to make this armor pop a bit more and look a bit more metallic-y than just acrylic-y. They're not words. Then to try and smooth out these transitions, I'll be going over the different tones with some 50-50 mixes of the two colors used and using glazes of that color mix to try and smooth out the transitions. Just going over again and again and again with real thin glaze layers. And hopefully that should start to make it look a bit more smoother than harsher. This is the part I'm still trying to work on because my transitions aren't always as smooth as I want them to be. But you know, that's kind of the point of trying and learning as you go. It's then just a case of picking points of highlight across the body. I try and stick to the edges and raised areas to be the brightest reflections and the deeper recesses and curves tend to be darker and then I just kind of try and blend between the two a bit. This is the main skill of NMM, I think, and it's something that I feel you just keep improving on as you can sort of understand where light would hit more and mapping it out becomes easier. But I'm kind of just making it up as I go and I'm just kind of hoping for the best with it. When it comes to the axe, I tried it a couple different ways, but the one I was happiest with was bringing the highlight to this edge area of the blade and then going over the main body with some brown tones and blending it between the lighter tones at the top and adding in some darker shades at the bottom and again just blending between them again and again. Then on the highlighted edge, I'm just adding this kind of light bounce effect to it using some reference images of lighting on axes that I found online to compare with then just softening out these edges that you can see here. Then just with a very small brush, I'm just sharpening out these edge lines and adding some scratch detail to the shine and then just edge highlighting to get those extreme highlight reflections in. Then just one last blast on the axe with some glazing and some extra edge highlighting and he should be ready to rock and roll. And there's our big iron golem done. It's quite late now so I'm going to put him to one side and I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to do the base in the morning. Well it's a new day and first things first I'm going to map out the base around the model based on the style of the arena that you fight him in in game. 
So we have this kind of like little introductory bridge here after you enter from the fog gate, which then leads up to this sort of wider raised region in the middle, which has kind of rubble around it and it has a couple of little steps leading up to it as well. And then I can just draw up some little ruined walls to go on the sides as well, and then just cut these out so that we can get them designed up on some foam. Now I have learned from my thumb slicing incident from the other week when making my sea good. Ah, fuck it! I'm going straight into using my hot wire cutter instead of my knife to cut these pieces into shape. And yeah, these are my pajamas. They're fucking sick. <laughs> Now that our base is cut up, we can start piecing it all together and gluing it up. I'm using these little sewing pins to keep the pieces in place whilst I put it all together. Nice little nifty hack. And to create the brick wall effects, I'm taking this pencil thing and just drawing out the bricks onto the foam, doing a kind of light score on the foam to map it out, then just chopping out little bits with my knife to give it that kind of broken look. Then just taking up some balled up kitchen foil, press it over the foam and it should give it that nice textured look. Then I can just take a toothpick to make these brick lines a little bit deeper. Wonderful. Then just repeat that for all the walls. Now the floor has this kind of cobbled stone look to it. So I'm just going to take my toothpick and I'm just going to draw that out across the whole base. Very cool. Now that that's done, we can piece it all together. And on this main platform area, I'm just going to do this flagstone design on the floor with maybe some cobble design on the top, just to kind of mix it up and break it up a bit. Now, just to glue it all together. Now, whilst the glue is drying, I can take some of the leftover foam I had lying around and just use it as rubble and just dot it all over the place. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, I think that's looking pretty sense fortressy. Now it's just time to coat the entire thing with some Mod Podge, just to seal it up before we paint it. I think it's starting to look pretty cool. So there we go, all primed black. Now we can start getting those nice details in. So starting off by basing the whole thing with our Mechanica Standard Grey again, then we can start adding in different colours to random cobbles and stones, starting with our Storm Vermin Fur. Then I can just start mixing in some dark browns to it as well with some Rhinox hide. I'm also using Celestia Grey to add some bright cobbles and stones in as well. And just adding some dry brushing of Xandri dust onto the steps should give it a bit more realism. And then just dotting in some green for a bit of mossiness to the cobbles with some Lauren Forest and that should help with that sort of natural nature kind of look. Then a big old black wash over the top of it all to tie all these different tones together. Terrific. Then I can just dry brush on some lighter tones to give us that stony rocky texture and lighting to all of the bricks. Very nice. Now just for a little bit of nature to finish off the piece. So a couple little dollops of basing glue and then we can start adding in some burnt green flock, then some random bits of grass tufts to tuck in between the rubble. Then I'm just carrying on building up different colours of flock and tufts around to build up that nice natural texture. And there we are. I left it all to dry for a good few hours, shook off the excess, and this is what we're left with. A lovely little Sense Fortress roof base for the Iron Golem to fall off of. So to prevent any falls, let's get him glued up. And there we go, our nice happy little iron golem atop his sense fortress. Pretty happy with how this hot wire cutter is and how easy it's making building these bases. I would 100% recommend getting one if you're thinking of doing this kind of thing. But anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, drop a comment below, tell me what you think. And if you're new here, slap that subscribe, see what happens. Maybe something nice will come your way. I don't know, the world's a weird place like that. But yeah, that'll do it from me. I'll see you lot next week. And don't you dare, go hollow.